Words have shapes. Consider a unit circle of radius 1 with 26 equally spaced points, each representing a letter of the English alphabet. I'm starting at the right side of the circle and moving counterclockwise to make the math more straightforward. Oh yeah, this is a math video, not a linguistics one. Each word can be drawn onto the circle by playing connect the dots with its letters. The looks like this. Here's deliberation. Condo. And baboon. Words like a uh or I are just single points on the circle. Which words have similar shapes? Anagrams might be similarly shaped to each other. They're made up of the same letters, after all. And plural words are probably similar to their singular forms. But there may be more interesting patterns the deeper we look. First, we need to formalize the definition of a word's shape and what it means for words to be similarly shaped. Let's go back to baboon as an example. We could define a word's shape in a number of different ways. We could look at the perimeter of the word, keeping track of the distance between letters as we draw chords through the unit circle from letter to letter. In this context, similar words would be those whose perimeters match, even if they're comprised of different chords. Baboon happens to have the same perimeter as defer. We could draw the bounding polygon, whose corners are the unique letters in a word. The word's shape is the area of this polygon. Words with two or fewer unique letters form either a line or a point, so their polygonal area is zero. Now we define similar words by their polygonal area. Baboon has the same polygonal area as defer, once again, but also surf and tugs and moan. Both the perimeter and polygon shapes are interesting and worth exploring, but what if we want a stricter definition of word shape, one that is closer to the concept of geometric congruence? We could think of the word as a graph, with each letter being a node and adjacent letters having edges drawn between them. If we say that a pair of nodes can only have one edge between them, and nodes cannot connect to themselves, baboon now looks like this. But we'll keep visualizing it on the letter wheel. In this context, similar words are those whose graphs, when displayed on the letter wheel, are congruent. They can be rotated or reflected, but the actual shape of the graph cannot change. Baboon is now similar to refers, but it takes a rotation and a reflection to get there. A word can, in theory, be the same shape as any number of other words, but how common is it for two words to share a shape? And what's the most common shape in the English language? How many unique shapes are there? I made a Python application to assist in answering these questions. First, we need a word list to work with. The one that I'm using contains about 100,000 words, but many of those contain characters that can't be mapped to the letter wheel. We'll first run through the word list and sanitize it, removing all words that contain characters outside of the A to Z character set. Then we need to make a database to store the word shapes. I'm using SQLite. The application takes a word, projects it onto the letter wheel unit circle, and computes its various shapes. Perimeter is easy, it's just the sum of distance between two points. To find a word's polygonal area, we first discard all non-unique letters, then sort the word alphabetically. This doesn't change the bounding polygon, but it makes applying the shoelace formula to compute the area very straightforward. This is visualized as breaking the polygon into triangles and computing their areas separately and summing them. Finding the strict shape of a word, what I'm calling its graph shape, is more complex. We need to account for rotational and reflection symmetries while distilling a word down to its graph. Here are the graphs of baboon and refers again. They have the same shape, but are rotated and reflected relative to one another. What we first need to do is normalize the words so they have the same rotation. We rotate each word so it begins with the letter A. We also flip each word upside down, reflecting it about the x-axis, then we flip it backwards and repeat the reflection step, looking at all the graphs at the same time, for congruence. 
We compute the graphs for each word and use a very handy piece of software called Scott to compute a canonical representation of each of these graphs and save it as a hash. The gist is that any two words whose graph shapes can be rotated or reflected to exactly overlay one another should now have the same graph shape hash in the database. It's a sort of signature of the word's shape. And that's everything that's needed to populate the database and start investigating the patterns and statistics of word shapes. The most common graph shape is shared by words such as pip, none, and o. Just a two-letter line between letters seven spaces apart on the letter wheel. Looking at perimeter shapes, the most common is shared by words such as dolls and taxi, wheel, and halo. The most common polygonal shape is words like allergist, bluebirds, esophagus, and whiskery. As for what proportion of words have unique shapes, that varies greatly depending on what type of shape we're looking at. For graph shapes, 89.9% .9 of words have unique shapes. That's not surprising given the strict definition of congruence. Similar perimeter is much more common, at 53.5% of words having unique perimeters. This is due to the relatively small number of unique coordinates on the letter wheel. Words can be made up of entirely different letters that don't share relative positions on the letter wheel, but still share a perimeter. Only 0.13% of words have unique polygonal areas. Words that are anagrams, or even near anagrams, that don't necessarily have a one-to-one -one letter mapping, but share a set of unique letters, ball and lab for example, will always share a polygonal area. This compounds with the factors that make shared perimeters common, and results in very few unique polygonal word shapes. If you define polygonal shape equality to be similar to geometric congruence, the proportion of unique polygonal shapes would be higher, and wouldn't include words whose bounding polygons just happen to share an area. This would be a sensible definition to work from, but not the one that I used here. The longest word that shares a graph shape with any other word is transcendentalists, at 18 letters, sharing with, unsurprisingly, transcendentalist. Unappreciative tops out the perimeter shape at 14 letters, sharing perimeter with appreciatively. At 23 letters, electroencephalographic shares a polygonal area with hypoallergenic. The project link will be in the description if you want to play with it yourself. Just a heads up, it takes quite a while to compute all of the graph shapes for words, so I've supplied an abridged word list and pre-populated database as a jumping off point. The application should be fairly straightforward to use, just load a database of word shapes and you're good to go. Typing words into the input box will query the database for any words that match their graph, polygonal, or perimeter shapes, depending on which mode you select with the dropdown. There are several buttons at the bottom of the window that perform specific SQL queries on the database for convenience. To create your own word shape database with a new word list, go to File, New Database, pick a name and location, then File, Open Dictionary, and select your word list. Then create shapes and let the application run. Progress can be monitored in the command line. I'm not sure there's any profound takeaway or application of the ideas explored that reveals something about the nature of language here, but that being said, I think it's interesting to visualize words as shapes, but with geometric data that still captures their written forms.